a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do continue, let us give a brief little review. In the last part, we had our four characters, who they found themselves in the SCP universe. Now, after they encountered a version of Deku who, he explained a lot of things to them, he revealed a lot to them as well. He then flung them away. Now. Izuku, he's met a version of himself who works for the SCP Foundation. And the man just sat down to talk to Deku. He is very curious about what's going on. The Foundation were very curious to find out that one of their agents came from another reality. And right now they do want to confirm a few things. Now, Bako, she actually is in another cell. And Izumi and Katsuki... They actually were picked up nearby where the Red Pool is, since they were found out in the wilderness. Now, with that being said, we actually will cut open to Deku and, well, Deku, who they have been talking for quite some time. The quests the Foundation has were all quite simple. They need to verify quite a bit of things, and right now... That is going to be somewhat difficult. So, we left the interview, personally, to Agent Midoriya. Now, we do actually where Deku he confirmed quite a bit. Birthday, date of birth, date of birth, parents' birthdays, parents' names, mother's maiden name, parents' appearances, and names as well. Along with even confirming the areas where they may have grown up in, in his own reality, compared to this version of Midori's reality. Now, Deku does find a lot to be surprising. He's getting a lot of these things right. However, there may be a point where the timelines do diverge. And Izuku, he doesn't even explain it to this version of himself. Keeping it to himself as he does is keep talking. Alright, so... Is that everything? Well, that's a lot of it. Right, and from initial reports, I've heard, you claim to have been thrown into this reality by a god. If that's the case, could you give me their name? Because I want to check it against SCP database. More than likely, we'll be able to document it and, well, not release you into this reality, but perhaps find you a position with the Foundation, or more than likely contain you. Since you're telepathic. Okay. Hmm. Alright. Listen. This is going to be hard to hear. But the god we met. It was me. Okay. I'm actually being serious here. Listen. I was pretty busy. Today's my day off. I didn't set my alarm, and I had nothing to do. Today is my rest day. I really don't want to work out. I'm tired, hungry, and I want another cup of coffee. Okay, again, I'm not joking. It's hard to understand, and my friend doesn't even believe it. You mean your girlfriend? Actually, that's the other thing. I'm going to explain something to you, and it's going to sound weird. Me and her aren't from the same reality. We come from opposite worlds, where their genders are flipped to the ones in my world. Really, and how do you know this? Because I lived in her world for a while, and then we jumped to a different reality. Okay, so... How many of you are there? There's four of us. 
Okay, so she's from a different reality. And you're saying that she's from a flipped world, I guess? Yeah. So where are the other two? You see, that's the thing. In my reality, the person who was with me, there was two of us, they're my best friends. And she's my best friend. I follow the logic here, but I really don't want to ask. Yeah, the fourth person is Izumi Midoriya. Okay, just just give me a minute for a second. Okay. Well, that's not fun. You see, now I'm going to have to put in a request with the Foundation. Since there's a file out there I really don't like having brought up. What is it? Well, you see, it was a prank from Dr. Bright. And I put a bullet in his throat for doing it. However, right now, those files seem to be very important. So, I'm going to dig them up, and we'll have people on the lookout for your friends. Okay, but you don't know what they look like. Trust me. I'm pretty sure they'll be able to find her, especially with the information we provide. And if need be, we can use the SCP on your friend. I'm sorry, use an SCP on her? Yeah. It's harmless, but it's annoying as fuck. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on. You're not doing that. Okay. Listen, it's still way too early. I stayed up late last night. I just want more coffee. Take it up with a scientist. I'm just throwing out things, okay? The man's going to stand up. And telling Deku is just going to wave him off. That, nice to go do something else. Scientists will have questions and talk to him. So, goodbye. Now, Deku is going to watch himself leave. As the man who is going to walk over to the other cell containing Bakugo. And whenever he does go to walk in, he does meet Bakugo Katsuki, or Katsuki as she has claimed. And, he actually has watched as she has going to jump up and run over to him, her throwing herself at him into a large hug, him tensing up, as she's going to ask him if he's okay, and if he's doing a lot better, ask him exactly if the doctors are giving them any word as to what's going on, because this really isn't cool. Okay, you're hugging a bit too tight. Okay, sorry. I'm going to loosen her grip. Alright. Okay. You must just crack my back. Mark down and increase strength. As a result. Izuku, are you okay? Okay. Before we start, don't hug me like that again. Second, I'm this version of me, if that makes sense. Oh god, there's a counterpart in this reality. I take it that that's new? Okay, yeah, listen. That is new. I'm not going to try and bore you with the details. But this is so weird. You're talking weird? I just met myself in the other fucking room. And I expected today to be normal. You know, other than the fact that I'm not stationed on duty today. And then I apparently meet a counterpart of somebody I used to know. Really? Yeah. <sighs> Listen, I'm tired. So, I just need to confirm all the information your friend had. Now, the interview would begin. And Izuku can tell that, Katsuki, she's clearly somewhat disturbed by this interview. I mean, it's just odd. However, the information, it is all there. And Izumi, or Katsuki, she was going to at least talk about Izumi at length a bit, and explain their reality a bit more to this guy. And the guy, after he does get what he needs to, he does go to leave. 
And for right now, there is actually back over with Izuku. Well, he has been feeling this strange mental bombardment, he has been doing a lot better. They reduced the lights on his cell just a little bit, and whenever they needed to, they lowered it a lot more. And then the fact was, they tried to use Teleco Alloy and put some things up in his cell. And that actually started to work out more. And Izuku, yeah. After that, he felt a lot better. He just seemed to be doing a lot less shaking, if that makes sense. Or really just, you know, mind reading. Now, a lot of people were intrigued to know more about this. I mean, even the Foundation were curious. This is a superpower without a drawback. And from what they understand, it is incredibly useful to them. Now, the Foundation, they wish to know a lot more. And they are a lot more curious hearing about these counterparts. So, they're dealing with two different realities and some sort of Eldritch God. So, it's Wednesday then. Now, a lot of people in the Foundation, they aren't even at all surprised by this. However, hearing that Midoriya, or Agent Midoriya, is somehow involved in it, or at the very least, mentioned in it, it seems interesting. So, they're going to need to keep an eye on Agent, Agent Midoriya, just in case of future endeavors. Now, this is where things, they do actually get a lot more interesting. A few days would pass, and over this time, their actions were Bakko and Deku. The two are allowed to actually see each other a bit more. And some people, they actually do try to make the request for Izuku and Bakko, who have kept recommending it. They're requesting to be able to share the same room. However, the Foundation, they're not really too sure as to why they should approve this request. However, they can understand the whole going to be able to see each other thing. And while they would rather not have to play bodyguard for, well, anomalies, they are at least still trying to allow these two to spend time together. Since so far, they have been compliant. And they have not given them any reason to distrust them. Now, while that is all fine and good, there is still the idea of getting them security credentials. And making them at least somewhat okay to deal with. But the problem is Izuku, being a telepath. A helmet of telekill alloy would most likely disrupt his powers. And they do want to do some more testing with his ability to see what he can do. However, Izuku, he has to explain to the Foundation that these are not his superpowers. His original powers, as he calls them, were to spew flames from his body. And a lot of the Foundation members, they at least do go to note that information down. Since he has mentioned it before. He talked about how these were Izumi's powers. But, yeah. They're still taking that with a grain of salt. So far, they've done their scans and made their rounds. They have not found anybody resembling or near to Izuku. Now, we actually have on a day, somewhere around a few months later, where Deku and Bakugo they actually have begun to start showing exactly how valuable they might be as assets to the Foundation. At this point, it's been around, let's say, two or three years. So that's just to add, add on a little bit more time. And by this time, there actually is where the two, yeah, they've been given official clearance and they've helped during breaches. And they've even helped to contain certain anomalies. And today, it is actually the day. Deku, he is laying in bed in his personal quarters. And he is at least trying to think about what to do. As while he is laying in bed, he actually is going to hear somebody over a radio ask Midoriya if he's there or if he's awake. Hmm? Hello? Yes, Midoriya. Or... Well, yes, Midoriya. 
listen. We were wondering if you would be able to help provide a test. Test? Yes. Certain tests will be valuable to know. And others, they are just out of speculation. Now, would you be willing to assist us? Um, I guess, but are you going to give me more information? Uh, your girl's down here. Okay, well, I'm sure she heard you refer to her as that. Then she'll more than likely beat the shit out of you. Right, right. Uh, she's, um, she is her own person. And I'm pretty sure she can clear throw you across the room. She knows a lot of martial arts. We've noticed that. Exceptionally durable and, well, unpredictable. All that, she's fast. I'm aware of that. Now, Deku is going to get out of bed. Him doing so, putting on a uniform, and going to walk out of his quarters. And whenever he does so, a few people do go to see him. As Deku, he does make his way into the elevator, climbing inside, and going to press down the button. As he does go to get to the proper floor, he does go to walk in and see currently a test. As there is a few anomalies down there. Okay, so what are we looking that at? Mm, that's just the thing. We're looking at a termination attempt. Currently, we have um, 173 versus. One zero six. Uh, how exactly is this gonna go? We're not too sure. However, we do need you to stand by. Since this might go bad. Now, Deku, he is a bit concerned. And there actually is Bakugo, who she actually is gonna hand Deku a mug of coffee, ask him if he's thirsty. Thank you. So, Deku taking a sip, asking if there's any signs of Izumi or Bakugo. I checked this morning. So far, there's nothing. However, there's more than likely a chance they'll pop up again. I hope you're right. So, you two are from another reality, right? Both of them turning and seeing somebody strange. Uh, yeah. So, you're from the same one. Both of you looking at each other. Looking back and saying no. Okay, so, just so I'm clear though. Your realities are linked at somehow. Um, well, uh, you see, that's, um, that's the hard part to figure out. What do you mean? Well, um... Neither of us know for certain, but the crazy guy we we met, the one who might have been an SCP, he um he said it before to me once, but I'm not too sure if it's true. He said that he destroyed my reality. Oh, ah, uh, hmm, ah, uh, that's um. Yeah, I don't believe it, though. I mean, he seemed to be able to do a lot of weird things, but I'm not fully convinced. Now, as Deku is going to say that the test is over, and the two, they would look down into the testing chamber, and there's no longer any, SC no longer any SCPs down there. There's just a puddle of what used to be the old man, and... The, the statue, it's, it's destroyed. Now, people do try to put together the footage again, understand what may have happened inside the containment cell. However, that's just the issue. There was when they start, tried to observe the footage. And, yeah. It didn't go on too well. The camera was destroyed, and they got nothing. However, there were some strange sounds being picked up there. 
there was a sound of running water or no it almost sounded like a shower head in there and that was odd to them there should have been nothing in there that could have made that sound and then there was actually where something strange happened when it was being played izuku and bakugo both of them were looking at the screen and whenever the static started to cut in there was what the two did see they saw a lake somewhere a lake in the middle of nowhere during a blizzard and it was under the ice there was a man just pounding away at the lake water trying to get free but then he just starts to get pulled by something he has something wrap around his throat and he tries to open his mouth to gasp for air but there's nothing but water going inside of his mouth and then he's pulled down He's pulled down into a black pond. Yeah. Bako and Deku, they do both watch that. And the two, they're somewhat paralyzed by it. The man was Bakugo. And the two, they do go to look at each other before asking them to rewind that. Jesus, there's nothing there in the footage. It's nothing but scrambled feed. No, wait. Okay, no, hang on. That, that's not possible. What's up? Listen, I know that fight would have been good to see, but... I mean, it just... I don't think it would have worked. You can't look at the statue. Or observe it move, I guess. No, you guys didn't see that? Yeah, you guys... You guys should have saw that, right? The pond. Bakugo watching Deku. Who knows that I turned directly towards her? She saw it too? Yeah. That wasn't good, was it? No, I mean... Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, uh, what's going on, you two? Yes, I would like to know this. Okay, listen. Right now, I just saw my friend get dragged under a lake. On screen. And now the footage is gone. Okay, you sound fucking loony. But it's true, though. Okay, so you saw this too. Yes, I did. Okay. I'll talk to somebody. And perhaps maybe we can locate the incident. Now. As for that, this is a problem. These two SCPs have just neutralized one another. And we're not exactly too sure how. Okay, so... You guys try actually going down there and seeing if they're dead? Okay, are you really going to ask us that? Right, it's the foundation. Listen, I know you guys have tried a lot of shit to kill these guys, but maybe they're just finally dead. Yeah, if you knew these guys, I'm not too sure you'd be saying that with a straight face. Okay, they can't be that bad. One is a pocket dimension and one's nearly indestructible. Nearly indestructible. Yeah. They're almost as bad as 096. They, I mean, he doesn't sound so bad. Do you even know the incident reports? Uh, the what? The incident reports. Okay, he's a ketter. Now... The statue, he was bad. And the old man, yeah, he was not easy to contain. However, we're just lucky now. That's two gone, and about a couple thousand more to go. Okay, so what now? This being where there actually is a bit of a pause. The person trying to think. Okay, they'll collect their findings, they'll report the higher-ups, and probably get a promotion out of this. So, there's that going for them. Being able to neutralize two very dangerous, dangerous anal- Two- Hmm, let's try that again. Being able to neutralize two very dangerous anomalies at once, both cost-effective and a two-birds-one-stone situation. Yeah, that's going to look pretty good on his record. Now, the person is trying to think. 
And right now there actually is where the intercom for the site does start to go off. As it starts to report. This is not an emergency. However, personnel are advised to shelter in place. Dr. Brett is loose in the facility. And he is currently using an SCP to some unknown means. If they see Dr. Bright, it is a kill on site order. Now, this does somewhat surprise everybody. And Deku, yeah. From the amount of time he has spent here, Dr. Bright, that fucker? He is, well, quite simply, the most insane man he has ever met. Now, there is actually where Deku and Bakugo, the two, do decide to just go out and see about Dr. Bright. Now, the two do make their way up an elevator, and once they do go to walk out of it, there actually is Dr. Bright, who currently he is running down the hallway, and he's being chased by a 939. Now, Dr. Bright, he actually is having a bit of fun. Him turning around and going to throw a bouncy ball towards it. It bouncing off of the walls as it does start to build more and more momentum. Well, it is flying through the air. The actually where it does get to directly smash into the 939. It going straight through the bottom of its skull and upwards out of the top of it. As it's going to directly smash into the wall and crack it heavily. Before hitting into the ground and cracking it a lot more heavily. Before Deku does, does just go to bring up his hand. The ball being caught in midair. I just to just bounce upwards and I'm going to start bouncing down. And Deku, he actually feels feel the strain put on his powers. As the ball, it does get to finally stop after a second. And Dr. Bright is going to directly turn and look at Deku. Him ask him, what the hell was that? Hmm? Alright, you've had your fun. Hmm? No, I haven't. I mean, besides, I'm having so much fun. I finally was able to get my hands on that one SCP. And I gotta say, the cola tasted super strange. But it's been amazing. It's been doing so much wonders for my research. And I've been just doing so much. You don't understand anything about it. It's gonna be revolutionary. Phenomenal. I mean... I'm gonna somewhat pause. Before we're gonna fall backwards. Since he just died of a heart attack. And Deku, he does gonna stare at that. Well. Okay. I'm gonna turn his head and seeing a few other 939s who have all escaped containment. And Deku, he does a directly look towards them, but we're just going to bring his hand up. Bringing his hand into a fist, and then we're going to turn it. As the 939s do go to drop dead. And Bakko, she's going to ask him about exactly what they're supposed to be doing here. Hmm. Uh, that's a bit of a hard one. Uh, don't touch the amulet. Let me handle that. Okay. Okay, but what about Izumi and Bakugo? That's going to be a bit of a difficult one. We can ask some of the higher-ups to look for them, but... Trying to narrow it down in the world, it's going to be difficult. I mean, we haven't seen them in three years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you think that they're going to react... Uh, I didn't really think about anything like that. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sure they're going to find this place to be weird. Weird. Apparently Bigfoot exists, and Mount Everest is covered in corpses. That says quite a bit about this place. And then apparently there are multiple organizations... And a lot of the stuff we thought was just fake is real. So I'd say that does count for the list of strange shit. But he didn't lie though. Yeah, your counterpart didn't lie. The next place would be fucking bonkers. Well, I mean, is this normal weird, Zuko? I mean, I just, I just feel like it's super weird. It is, most definitely. Oh, thank God. But, I mean, we're getting used to weird. I mean, besides, uh, Deku someone going to look down. Talking about how they kept the bodies from that one military world. 
So at least that does give them an advantage. Hmm. You're right, but are these still technically our bodies? That's a really good question. Yeah, I mean, I still have my scar, but there's a bit of an issue, isn't there? I'm... I'm just going off the assumption that there are bodies, Izumi. I mean, we don't know. They could very well be, or they could just be different bodies at all, entirely. But the fact is, we know that this body I think I'm in is the military body. Because your counterpart exists here? Yes. Okay, then. Well, I guess we should just call it lucky, then. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should. So, we're rake for lunch after we dropped off Dr. Bright? Oh, yeah, sounds fine. What are you feeling? Hmm. Well, I think the site cafeteria might have something good. But maybe if we actually ask, we can go out and get something good. I mean, we're allowed off site now, right? Technically, but you're not allowed to go back to Japan. Uh, that's fair. Well, I mean, you... Your counterpart exists there, so there's that. Well, I mean, technically it's not my counterpart. Yeah, but they don't understand the whole doppelganger effect. They're not too sure how it works, because they were just worried about me and myself being in the room, let alone making physical contact with one another. Oh. Yeah. Along with that, apparently... Well, nothing happened... But that's because we didn't physically interact. We've explained to them what happened with us in Izumi, you and Bakugo, when we were all first met, nothing happened, space-time didn't fucking unravel, but they're still cautious. And they don't know how that works either. Right. Right. But they're taking our information. Good though, right? I hope so. Yeah. The two had dropped Dr. Bright off. And right now, they do, go to, they do go to just break for lunch. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.